Today, I'm excited to welcome a very special guest on the show. He's been making a big impact on college athletics for nearly two decades, bringing leadership and passion to Baylor University as the athletic communications director. With past roles at places like Kentucky, UT Arlington, and UTSA, his experience speaks for itself. Since joining Baylor in 2022, he's been the go-to for football and earned Baylor's One Standard, One Accord Award for his dedication and leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Brent Ingram. Thanks, Andre. I appreciate you having me, man. Excited to visit with you. Thank you. Well, I want to start by asking you what originally drew you to Baylor and this role as athletic director. Yeah, man. Great question. Um, you know, I grew up in Kentucky uh, and always uh, always was interested in what that first career path, uh, you know, journey would be for me. Uh, I was a very bad high school football player uh, in Kentucky and uh, always uh, knew that my athletic career was not going to progress very far on the field. Um, and so when I was a senior in high school, I had the opportunity to do uh, something called experience-based career education, which is basically like a co-op program where you go to different job sites. Um, and my first job site was uh, an equine veterinarian hospital, the world's best in Lexington, um, and quickly realized that was going to be too much science for me. Um, so then my next step was uh, Kentucky's Athletic Media Relations Office. Uh, and I just very quickly fell in love with that with that career path and that that job and, uh, you know, became very clear to me. This is what I wanted to devote my life to and, um, you know, uh, kind of be in the, uh, the thing about this career path is it allows you to be a part of a team without truly being, you know, an athlete um, and kind of you're tied to the success and the, the failures of the team and you get to see the, the goods and the bads. And so, um, this is just a really rewarding career that I've, I've certainly fallen in love with. And so after, uh, you know, really devoting the better part of a, uh, a decade and a few years, uh, at Kentucky, I transitioned down to Texas and, um, spent about 18 months at UT Arlington, uh, which was really a great experience for me. I got to see college athletics at a different level, um, than I had experienced in the SEC, uh, and then transitioned to UTSA in San Antonio, which was really a wonderful experience for me. Uh, can't say enough good things about that. My time there, um, you know, San Antonio market is one that is uh, really uh, <clears throat> there's not a lot of colleges there. Um, you know, UTSA is the kind of the university in town. And besides the Spurs, it's really the show in town. And so it was really cool to see a youthful university like UTSA kind of grow the way it has. Um, you know, they've only had football for 10, 15 years and only been a university for a little over 50. So uh, that was a really good experience for me to, to spend four years there and uh, have the opportunity to work under some great leaders and learn a lot there. Um, and while I was at UTSA, I always kind of kind of had in my in my head, uh, my wife and I, Courtney, always kind of had in her head, boy, if the Baylor job ever came open, you know, if the if the communications lead at Baylor ever became a, a possibility, that would be a place we'd love to be. Uh, and when it did, it uh, it kind of fell into place. It really, really a God thing, the way everything worked out. Um, you know, I really feel like we were meant to be here and, um, you know, uh, just really called to be here and have have just loved it. This is a special place. Um, just really blessed, really blessed to be able to to be here at Baylor. Well, obviously you want to see success on the field and court, but I mean, you got to have the ap academics as well. So how do you maintain those standards at that level? Yeah. You know, that's one thing I think that makes Baylor unique is that, um, you know, we are more than just wins and losses. Um, you know, Baylor is, uh, is a, a great institution of higher learning. You know, it's uh, academics really matter here. Um, you know, and beyond that, um, you know, developing great people matters. Um, you know, we feel like um, Baylor is a, a place that you can really grow um, spiritually, um, you know, academically, athletically. It just kind of has all those things to offer. And so uh, we're really proud of the type of student athlete we have that represents us here at Baylor, um, you know, and certainly proud of the, you know, all the, the students on campus and what they mean to the athletic experience in the Waco community. Um, but yeah, balancing that is a challenge for sure. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, in a lot of ways, it's a full-time grind of, of being a student athlete, you know, you're up early or you're, you're staying late, you're, um, you know, doing all the things you have to do to succeed on the field. 
but you also have to find ways to succeed in the classroom with a pretty uh, strenuous, strenuous academic load. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a real challenge. And I think we've got the right kind of student athletes here that really embrace that challenge and, and uh, you know, get everything they can out of the experience. Well, now that we're on the topic, are there any ways you work to prepare student athletes for life after college, especially if they don't go pro? Yeah, you know, I think that's this is uh, <clears throat> as good of anywhere that I've been at in terms of doing that. Uh, our athletic director, Mac Rhodes, who is, uh, is really an industry leader in so many areas in college athletics, he uh, he has kind of a mantra that's called preparing champions for life. Um, and so we take that serious. That's not just words on a wall here. Uh, it's something that we really care about. And so we, uh, you know, we have four pillars where we're, we're focused on how we can prepare student athletes for the, the next phase of their life, um, you know, through all through, you know, the spiritual development and the academic success and, and winning championships on the field. Um, you know, so it's something that we, we take really serious uh, and is really important to us. Yeah, well, in recent years, the popularity of NIL name image likeness has really increased. And with NIL rights changing college sports, how has Baylor adjusted to support its athletes? Yeah, you know, I think uh, we feel like we're an industry leader in that in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we uh, obviously the world is changing. It's changing every day, um, you know, with the pending litigation going on uh, nationally with the NCAA and, and um, you know, its schools and its membership. And so uh, it's hard to really pin down uh, a great answer for that because it's changing every day. Uh, but we feel like we're an industry leader. We feel like, um, you know, Baylor's a great place for a student athlete to, um, you know, experience the, uh, you know, the traditional college athletics experience. Uh, but we also feel like we, uh, we have the opportunity to, uh, to be in the, the NIL space uh, at a high level. Um, you know, we are, are really blessed um, to have just a, a great broad base of stakeholders uh, of donors that are really invested in our student athletes and our coaches and our programs and our university and our community. And so, uh, you know, we feel blessed that we have that. Uh, our collective is, is GXG, which is green and gold. And uh, it's, it's led by a great group of, of humans uh, who are just really focused on how they can best, um, you know, support our student athletes and our coaches and our general mission of preparing champions for life. Well, how do you see, well, not just NIL, but maybe some other NCAA rule changes affecting college sports in the next few years? Yeah, Andre, it's, it's going to change things, man. You know, we uh, we are all kind of in the unknown. Uh, every day is is uh, an, an un unknown space for us in terms of we don't know what it's going to look like 12 months from now, um, you know, with with the, the pending litigation and, <laughs> you know, the house settlement. We all kind of have some guidelines as uh, as institutions <clears throat> about what we think it's going to be like and how we can we can best position our universities for it um but there's still just so many unknowns man you know um the key i think is that we're we're all providing <clears throat> excuse me our student athletes the best opportunities um you know to excel athletically and and in, in the classroom and you know that's that can't ever go away um, you know, <clears throat> we are all in this business in college athletics because it's more than just, you know, just wins and losses or just, um, you know, a job for us. It's it's a uh, calling in a lot of ways. And so we don't want to lose that. What would you say are you most excited about for Baylor's future, both athletically and as a university? Say that again, Andre, I'm sorry. What are you most excited about for Baylor's future, both athletically and as a university? Yeah, you know, I think it's uh, it's cliche to say this, man, but, um, you know, the people yeah. make the place. And I think that is uh, what makes Baylor special is that we've got a great collection of people beyond the fan base and the community and, um, you know, the university. It's uh, it's our coaches and our student athletes are just really good people. Um, and it's that's not something you can just – um, you know, say lightly because it's not always the case. Um, you know, it's, it's a joy to come to work every day and it's a joy to work with, with the coaches that we have here. Um, and in this new world of the house settlement and, um, unknowns in college athletics, 
just feel really grateful on all of our, our uh, department employees do just that we get to work with these people in this time of unknowns. Is there anything about your job that might surprise people? You know, I think it's uh, <clears throat> whenever I'm meeting with like a younger person trying to get in the business, I think one thing that I always try to explain is that you just never know what your day is going to be. Um, you know, you might show up with a, a to-do list of, of 10 things and spend the whole day doing other things than those 10 things, you know? And so I think it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, you gotta be able to pivot. You gotta be able to think on your feet and it's a very fast paced environment. Just college athletics is in general. And, uh, you've got to be prepared for that and to be able to execute things on a, on a short time frame. And so, um, I think that's, that's kind of something that, that, uh, is unique to athletics communications in general. And, uh, certainly, uh, for us is that you've just got to be able to to pivot. You know, sometimes you're not going to get that, that to-do list done. Yeah. Um, well, how do you manage the pressures that come with representing such a high profile athletic department? Yeah. You know, I don't know that I think about it like that. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think, uh, it's a, a privilege and a, a blessing to be where I am. And I'd like to think that everybody here thinks that as well. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's a, it's a calling to be here. You know, it really is. And God has, has put me in this position in this moment and has put all of us in this position in the positions they are in this moment. And so I think, um, it's just really, uh, really a blessing to be here. And so I think you just can't get caught up on and uh, the the pros and the cons and the mistakes you make because you're going to make some, um, and, you know, you just got to focus on, on, uh, you know, your task, which is just uh, representing the, ba- the student athletes and the coaches and, and the university in the best possible light you can. And, um, you know, from, from my standpoint, just really, really honored uh, and proud to be here and, and just grateful. You mentioned earlier that Baylor was like that number one, that number one place you wanted to um, work work at. So I just want to know. I want to know what what really separates Baylor from the others. Yeah, you know, I don't want to be a uh, broken record, but it's the people, man. It really is. <laughs> um, we're not always going to have the most resources. We're not always going to have the the largest venues or the most fans or. Um, you know, the biggest NIL coffers. Uh, but what we have is great people, uh, great people all the way up and down the hallway and all of our buildings and all of our venues, just really special people who understand that we're, uh, we're out for more than just wins and losses. We're out to, you know, to have a higher calling than that and to represent uh, the university in the best possible way. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really an honor to be at a place like this where that is the focus and it's not just, Hey, did you win? Did you lose? Yeah. And I just want to ask you, what does a typical day? And I know you said you you have no idea what you're, you can't, you don't know what to expect um, in a day, but what would you say is, you know, a typical day in the day of a life of a athletic communications director? Yeah. You know, it depends on the time of year for sure. Uh, You know, I'm, I'm, honored to work with our football program here. And so right now we are just in the thick of it with football. Um, and, you know, once you get through bowl season, you get through kind of signing day and all that, it'll, it'll start to, to trend differently in terms of what your daily work is like. Um, it's never football is 12 months a year, so it's never not slow. Um, but when you're in the season, you're, <clears throat> you're so routine based, you're so driven by, by the next week, the Saturday, uh, coming up and how you prepare for that Saturday, whether it's a home game or a road game. Um, so during the season certainly is, is a different feel. Uh, I would say that, you know, most of our communication staff feels the same way with their specific sports. Um, you know, so if you're a basketball SID, you are uh, really dialed in to basketball season for, for however many months a year. Um, and then you might have a, a window of of kind of a different season or, um, you know, approaching your your daily work differently when you're not in season. Um, so I think certainly the time of year matters. Um, you know, you hope that you get a little downtime in the summer, but in these days we don't really. Um, you know, it's, it's 12 months a year. But, you know, I think um, everything you do is about <clears throat> promoting your coaches and your student athletes and your programs in the best possible way. And uh, trying to get get as many butts and seats to your venues 
and uh, you know, just try to <clears throat> create as much interest as you can in your in your programs and and tell the stories of your coaches and your student athletes in a way that that um, you know really helps helps further their mission. Have you ever had a favorite season, any sport, any um, university? Yeah, man, I got a lot. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I think uh, the 2006 Kentucky baseball season uh, was really special. We won the SEC and we finished in last place the year before. Um, so that was a really cool experience. Oh. I was kind of, um, you know, in a, a minty role of somebody who was in the chair at that in that year and was really able to learn a lot and fall in love with the profession in that year. Um, you know, I have several Kentucky baseball seasons that really stand out with the bases loaded there. Um, but 2008, 2012, um, you know, 2012, I, I maintain was the best team Kentucky baseball ever had. Uh, and we really had an opportunity to, to do some special things and just fell short in a regional that was in Gary, Indiana. Uh, I could go on for hours about that. But, um, you know, 2012 was really special to me. 2014 was really special to me. We had the National Player of the Year named A.J. Reed, who was a, a great young man from Terre Haute, Indiana, who, uh, you know, is a, the best pitcher in the SEC and the best hitter in the country. Um, and so I don't know that we'll ever see that again in terms of a two-way player like that. Um, you know, he led the SEC in wins and ERA as a dude throwing 88 on Friday night and then led the country in home runs and RBIs and slugging percentage and all the things. So that was really cool to see him have that year and be able to promote him, <clears throat> you know, throughout the course of that spring. And then once I got to Texas, you know, we uh, working with UTSA's coach, uh, Jeff Trailer was really an honor um, you know, we had some really good teams. Uh, we had a, a team that finished 12 and two, uh, you know, hosted the conference championship game and won it in really dramatic fashion and had some, you know, some just real pinch me moments throughout that course of the year. So that was, uh, one of those years that you wait your whole career for, from a football standpoint where you're, you know, I think we won our first, um, you know, 10 games, something like that. And, uh, you know, coach trailer was just a really special personality and really, uh, rallied that whole community around a group of student athletes that were really fun to cover. So those, those things stand out for sure. Okay. Well, that's going to wrap it up for episode four of the Andre Hall show. Thank you so much, Mr. Ingram, for taking the time out of your day to join me. I know you're, you're a busy man. I know that. <laughs> and before we go, would you like to add any additional info for the viewers? No, Andre, just really appreciative of you, man. Uh had the opportunity to watch one of your one of your episodes earlier today. Just uh, you know, you can tell that you're really talented and, and a special young man. And so just grateful that I got to spend some time with you. I don't know that I'm worthy of being interviewed by anybody. Uh, I'm somebody who's behind the mic and and not really in front of it. And so uh, you know, I, I hope that that this was a good experience for you. Um just uh not knowing you very well, but proud of your career development. And I'm looking forward to watching you. Uh, you know, flourish in this industry for many, many years. Thank you so much. See you guys in episode five.